Hey everyone, the 2024 list of Oscar nominations is out and they are as confusing as ever. Some make great sense, others are real head scratchers, and others are actually great surprises. So let's take a quick look at the annual insanity that is the list of Oscar nominations and the films that I think were snubbed along the way, as well as the ones that I think are actually going to win in the end of the ones that were actually chosen. So first up, let's talk about the obligatory categories that everyone is actually talking about right now. Best picture. Most of the films that I expect to see on the list, they were here, including The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. I was pleasantly surprised to see American Fiction listed. It's a great movie. You should definitely see it. I was equally surprised to see that Anatomy of a Fall was on the list. I mean, I really liked the film, but I didn't think that it was best picture worthy when I saw it. In fact, I kind of forgot about it shortly after seeing it. The three films that I think should have been listed but weren't are The Creator, which I loved because it was so different and clever, and Air, which I thought was a fantastic period piece about the creation of the iconic Air Jordan shoes. But it was really more than that. That's such a limited way of putting it. But Air, great movie, great acting. Then there's Wonka, which was a visual delight, a strong script, superb acting, and a fantastically magical experience. I did reviews for these films, so you can see why I thought they were so great. But of this group, my prediction to win is actually Oppenheimer. Best director. Fine, whatever. I don't know. I would have swapped out Anatomy of a Fall for Asteroid City or Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. My prediction for this one is actually four things. I think they're actually going to win that one. Actor in a leading role. I don't even know what to do here. I love all these actors and seeing Coleman Domingo listed in his role for Rustin made my day. I love Coleman, but my prediction to win is actually Killian Murphy. He was astonishing in Oppenheimer. Actress in a leading role. Well, I know everyone's fussing about Margot Robbie not getting a nomination for Barbie. And I think she was better than both Annette Benning and Sandra Hewler. However, my prediction to win is with Lily Gladstone. She was phenomenal in her role. Such a good role. Actor in a supporting role. I don't know, I'm kind of feeling so much deja vu with this list. These films just keep coming up over and over again. It's like no other films were made in 2023. And yet, I can't fault any of these choices. My pick to win is Mark Ruffalo. The depth and breadth of what he does with his role in Poor Things makes him the absolute standout in this category. Actress in a supporting role. This category kills me. All these women earn their spot on the list, but I can't help feeling that Viola Davis was snubbed for her role in Air as Michael Jordan's mother. I don't even know who I would remove from this list to fit her in, but I feel like she should have been here. She was so good in that role. But I can tell you that my prediction to win is America Ferrera. I have said from day one that she was the reason that the Barbie movie worked. Yeah, Margot Robbie was Barbie and man, she was a good Barbie. But America Ferrera gave her the foil she needed to create depth for her character and that movie. So yeah, I'm saying America Ferrera all the way, all the way. I'm gonna quickly skip through a few categories here. Um, 
I think best adapted screenplay will probably go to Barbie, but my heart really wants it to go to American fiction. I predict that best original screenplay will go to The Holdovers, which was a deeply painful film in the very best way. I think best cinematography will go to Poor Things because it's a visual standout. But honestly, I think Wonka was snubbed on this list. And if Wonka was on this list, I think it would win. For best original song, my prediction is Waz Haze, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, from Killers of the Flower Moon, or at least that's who I hope will win. I'm just Ken will probably get it instead because everybody was talking about that. I mean, it was the standout moment for Ken in that movie, and it was great. It was a great song. Best costume design. I think it has to go to Napoleon. That's honestly the one thing that was stunning about that movie. But I think the costumes for Asteroid City also deserved a nod. So I think they're kind of snubbed by not being included. It was just a perfectly designed film and I think it should have been listed. Best sound will probably go to Maestro for obvious reasons, but I do think the sound design in the crater was pretty darn good. The snub in this category is the Eras Tour. I mean, honestly, WTF people, the Eras Tour was hands down the best designed feature that we saw in theaters. It was astonishing. It was so good total snub. Anyways, as for best original score, I don't know. I'm going to just throw a dart at the board and see what it comes up here. And you know what? It's coming up Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny so that they don't go home empty-handed from their franchise finale. I don't know. That one's always a mystery to me. Anyways, I'm skipping over the short films and the documentaries since I didn't watch those and I don't think it's fair for me to make any comments on a film or category when I haven't seen what's on the list. As for the international feature film category, where the heck is Godzilla minus one? I mean, honestly, that is a great movie. I'm sure those other films are great, and I actually didn't see most of them, but I did see Godzilla Minus One, and it deserved a spot on this list. This is a total snub, and what is great about this film is that it is kind of a hallmark back to the old tradition of Godzilla and filmmaking, and yet it brings in all of these modern sensibilities, and it just was so much fun. But the best part of this film is that even if you didn't understand a word of Japanese and you couldn't keep up with the captions, you still understood what was happening. And for me, that is a mark of a film that transcends region. It is all about story and that film captured story. And everybody who watched it would absolutely know exactly where they stood in that story. All right, as for the animated feature film, well, wow, there are some great films here. I want them all to win, but my winning pick is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. From the art to the story to the sound, the acting, this film is a class act and it's a standout. I cannot imagine a world in which Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse does not win. Makeup and hairstyling is a category that kind of mystifies me. I have no sense of style. But when I'm looking at the list of nominees here, Golda is the one that I'm going to pick. I mean, honestly, Helen Mirren didn't even look like herself. She was utterly transformed. And I know part of that is her ability to act, but the other part of that was the makeup and hair design. It was 
just transformational for her character. Production design. Seriously, Snub City, where is Lanka? Where is Asteroid City? On this one, both of those films should have been listed because they are spot on with that category. And I know, yeah, I sound like a broken record, yes. But anyways, of this group, I predict that Barbie will win because it really was a special film and the production design was exceptionally well done here. You really did feel like somehow you were transported into the land of Barbie. For film editing, this one could go to a number of different films. I mean, it could go any way, but I'm going to predict Oppenheimer because the editing of four different story threads with two different narratives, all of which are woven together dependent upon the point of view of the story that is being said in or being shown in that moment really mattered. And the editing was essential to making that narrative, the whole narrative work. I mean, that film is a masterclass in editing. Absolutely. And finally, for the visual effects category, and I think this is my favorite one. I love this category. Um, okay, I'm not going to say where is Wonka, but you can just imagine me saying that in your head because that's exactly what I'm thinking here because that was a total snub too. And you know what? I'm going to say it. Where is Wonka? Where is Wonka? This was their category. I guess Mission Impossible is on the list because Tom Cruise jumped off a mountain on a motorcycle, which was actually pretty cool. Or maybe it was because he was dangling off a broken train. Again, that was pretty cool. Both of which, yeah, those are good effects, good effects. But oh, I don't know. Again, you know, I think when you're looking at the list of films in this category, the one that really is at a whole different level from all the other ones listed is the creator. And whether you agree with the content or the story or anything like that, this film in this category is at a whole different level than the other films listed because of how they filmed that movie and then wove all of that filmed footage on site, on the ground, into the visual effects later. It, it just pulled all of that together. They just made it look so much more real by the way they did it. It was superb it was so well done i gotta say the creator is my prediction for this win as well so that is what i'm thinking with this year's oscars there are lots of other films that i wish were on the list you know somewhere but overall it's a pretty good list and i look forward to seeing how it all turns out um i kind of wish that Maybe there was a secondary Oscars list, like the almost made it list. I don't know. It's just one of the things that bothers me is when the same films make it on the list in almost every category over and over and over again. That does bother me. It feels a little out of sync. Yeah, that's it just doesn't feel right. All right. That's enough about what I think. What I would love to know now is what are your predictions? What did you think of this list? Who do you think will win? And who do you think has been snubbed? Even if you don't think they would have actually won the category, what films should have been listed where that weren't there? Let me know in the comments below. I definitely want to chat about this because um, I don't know. It's just fun to talk about your favorite films of the year and who deserves an Oscar or an award. Okay, that's it for now from me. Enough from me. Be sure to give this review a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more videos because there are more coming soon. Thank you so much, everybody. For now, I'll see you later. Bye.